So should we just get into it? And uh, I think that we are going to start with a review of I'm Thinking of Ending Things from the only person in the council who has watched it, uh, Yusuf. Yeah. I would have watched um, it. Yeah, I mean, this this was kind of a last minute edition that we added late last night because I was like, I want to watch this movie. And this was the only thing that would like kept me watching it because it was so slow and so boring. But I'm really happy that I got through it because I ended up really, really liking it at the end. Um, I think Netflix is the wrong place for it. I know with Mulan, I kind of went anti-theaters here. I'm going pro theaters again because I think having it on Netflix is kind of a disadvantage because there's this movie you need to be focused on, kind of like Charlie Kaufman's other films, like um, um, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, being John Malkovich, you really need to pay attention. And I think if, had I paid attention to this from the very beginning, it would have been much, much better. I think the cinematography is beautiful. I love the aspect ratio of it. The shots were really, really great. Um, the acting across the board was phenomenal. I loved Jesse. I love Jesse Plemons. Jesse Plemons is great. If you haven't seen Game Night, watch it. Um, Jesse Buckley, yes. I believe Game is her Night. name. Watch Game yes. Night. Watch Game watch Night. Game yeah. Night. Watch Game Night. <laughs> watch Game Night. <laughs> um, Jesse Buckley was great. Um, she's kind of, she was standing in for Brie Larson because she Brie Larson was supposed to be in this movie. I think she's much better than Brie Larson because Brie Larson would have just made it all about her and. I don't think Jesse Buckley did that. Tony Collette, we love Tony Collette. I don't understand how that woman does not have an Oscar yet. She was incredible, especially in this movie. I think Hereditary and this kind of go hand in hand. I mean, they're very different movies, so I don't like the comparison between the two, but I think her performance in both was great. Um, David Thewlis, I never really understood David Thewlis. I don't really like David Thewlis, but he was really, really, really good in this film. I liked him as the shame wizard on Big Mouth, but I hated him in um, Wonder Woman. Right, Harry Potter. Professor Lupin. Oh, that's right. I forgot that he was oh, in Wonder Woman, no. actually. I know we're not allowed, I I know we're not allowed Harry Potter. Now to like Harry Potter now, because, you know, J.K. Rowling's a bitchy yeah, turf. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, like, <laughs> like, the movies, come on. Is, like, Alfonso I, Cuaron, I completely forgot. that's his movie. That's I know, Alfonso, yeah. I, Sorry, dog. Okay, so, I take that back. I like David Lewis. Yeah, he's not just, and I will destroy yeah. you, Diana. Like, that's not who David Lewis <laughs> is. Don't judge him on that yeah. anymore, please. That was God. all on my mind, but he's back. He was really, really great in this film. Um, I recommend everybody, after you go watch this, read Collider's, like, explain thing, because it really, because I haven't read the book, um, and this is very different from the book, but I liked what they did and how they told the story. It's very abstract, but once it's kind of explained to you what he's doing, it makes a lot more sense. Um, and I really, like when I read this, I was like, whoa. And I appreciated the movie a lot more. So I think it's a, it's a good time. It's something, it's something to watch when you have time to kill. It's going to be really hard to watch it all the way through. Like I watched it last night. I stopped halfway through. I started again this morning. I stopped halfway through again. And then I finally finished it. And I think a lot of people are going to be like that, but it was a good movie. I'll give it an eight out of 10. I think the one thing is they have a lot of scenes in cars. I would have reduced those car scenes just by a little bit. The movie's like two hours and 15 minutes. I didn't need all the car stuff, but other than that, really good. So I have something to say. I loved your review, Yusuf. I um, will probably watch. Um, I'm thinking of ending things closer to award season even though it's kind of, it has an outside shot, but look, it, it, you never freaking know this year. There's a lot of things up in the air. But I'll say this about Jesse Buckley, and that's that if the Academy had gotten their head out of their asses last year and nominated decent songs for best original song, we would have had Jesse Buckley performing um, Glasgow at the Oscars because Glasgow yes. was a freaking phenomenal song. And so was Speechless from Aladdin. And they were both shut out. And in front, How and was Speechless frankly, not nominated? I don't understand. I still, to this day, songs, I don't comprehend. What's the Toy Story one Randy song Newman nominated? mumbling got a nomination over Speechless. My thing was, I thought that they were like, Disney was like, we're going to push Spirit from The Lion King over Speechless. But then Spirit didn't get in. And Toy Story that didn't get nominated. Scotland. And yeah. I was like, how is it that we had Show Yourself, which was, in my opinion, the better Frozen song, 
They so, should have promoted the hell I, out of that. I, yeah. Your <gasps> people is all missed, but I can't let you throw yourself away. And the stupid song from Breakthrough, which became a Di- like Disney pushed that because they bought Fox. Who saw that movie? Who was like, no, I, I love that song. No what one. is that? I saw exactly. that movie, exactly. and you know what? It's the, the ice with the yeah, the, little the Jesus there. movie oh. where the kid falls in the ice the and ice. the Lord saves him. <laughs> the <laughs> only good song nominated last year was the one from Harriet. Elton John yeah. was. I'm sorry, that song was awful. I love that song. No, I like and, Into the Unknown. I like. Oh yeah, Into mm-hmm. the Unknown. Yeah. I forgot, but Into the Unknown was also good. But you can actually tell that Cynthia Revo deserved to win an Oscar for that song because she yeah. was the only decent performance that actually happened that night. Everyone else, I actually wanted to show shards of glass down my ears. They were all awful. <laughs> Jesse oh, Buckley like, did get to perform at the BAFTAs though, and did. it was beautiful what she did. Of course it was. So I'm delighted for Jesse Buckley, and I wish she would have been able to perform at the Academy Awards last year. She deserved yeah. that. Yeah. The floor is back and to everyone. Jesse Plemons, I didn't know he could sing. He sung in this. He sung? Yes. Oh it was God. really good. I want to, there's a lot of things I want to talk about that it's not a spoiler review, so I'm not going to, but there's a lot of cool things, particularly towards the end. Like, I really like the end of this film. So if you, if you watch the movie, you know what I'm talking about, but yeah, good movie, eight out of 10. Oh, hey, thanks for watching. And remember, full episodes are available wherever you get your podcasts. With new episodes Tuesday at 9am Pacific Standard Time, links in the description box. And be sure to subscribe and hit that bell to stay caught up to date with The Council. Boys, I'm excited.